Welcome back to Yev's Builds. Today, we're putting the cylinder heads, two of them, because it's a V10, onto the V10. That's what we're doing, let's do it. First things first, as you've already seen in the B-roll, I've installed this Vanos uh, high pressure oil line, the inner one, right? So it's uh, sticking out right here. These have a tendency to fail, so I've replaced mine thanks to Hack Engineering. They hooked me up and this is some, you know, this is an updated one, so it's good. To install it, it's pretty simple. You have to go from the top, obviously. Make sure that it, ha it does have an O-ring. I, I did this high pressure line right now. Um, and I'm gonna leave it at that for a little bit until the heads are on and the timing is perfect Simply because I'm gonna do the dry sub system at the very end in case I have to do something with the chain It's easier for me to reach it from underneath right now rather than having the entire dry sub system installed So let's get on with the heads before we install the heads Of course you want to make sure that the surface is cleaned off completely in our case since uh, I've been rebuilding this entire motor This is as clean as it can get and then of course you want to put your head gaskets on Obviously you're gonna have to get a new one because dude if you reuse your head gaskets, what's wrong with you? Seat it, you know, make sure that these little guides are going through, that everything's seated properly, and that every hole is, is exposed the way it should be. I recommend going OE, but you know, up to you. Then we're gonna put in the head on, of course. We kinda need a second person, because this chain, if your oil pan is still on, you really need a second person to hold your chain up just so it wouldn't fall down through. In my case, it's not the end of the world, because my oil pan is not on, but we'll get onto it, and we'll have somebody hold this chain while I put the head on, and that's it. When you're putting the head on, make sure you put it down as evenly as possible all over the area just so that you wouldn't make any extra scratches on the inside, you know, on the bottom of the head and that they go through and seat down on these guiding pins. Make sure your head is surfaced because you don't want it to be warped and not know about it. Just like that. Before we tighten anything down, you kind of want to take a couple zip ties and make sure the chain does not go anywhere because we don't have the special tools that BMW requires because who needs them when you can get away with the zip tie. Give us some slack, just like that. There you go, and that's secure. Next up, we're gonna be putting in new shimmies. All right, new shims, new head bolts. I did get brand new head bolts because that's what you're supposed to do. Take some pliers, and it's pretty simple. You just, you know, hold on to them. Make sure you don't drop them because, man, it would be a shame. When you're putting the brand new bolts in, lube them up, make sure they're clean. Clean them up and just put them all in there at the same time because we're going to be torquing them in a sequence specific sequence and that's the most crucial part first what you want to do you tighten them to 40 newton meters so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve right and that exact sequence you, you torque them down to 40 newton meters then in the same sequence to 90 degrees and then again another extra 90 degrees and pretty much for the head bolts that is it then you come down over here and there's going to be two little little bolts in there you torque those down to eight newton meters and then for the chain guide right as you've seen in the b-roll that one had a chain guide going or a chain guide bolt go through here um and then there was a center one down right here but i already have this thing on um but there's a little guide over there's a little bolt for the guide over there and then this final one it's a size 10 mil it goes through here into that and you just tighten it up and that's it just like that, give it a good squeeze. The chain guide is in place. For this guide right here, you're gonna have to actually use a tensioner. I bought brand new ones. Uh, but then these little block off caps, make sure you replace these uh, little washers on them. 
That way you know for 100% sure it's not gonna be leaking and if it does, then you probably didn't replace your washer. Before we continue on with uh, the camshafts, what you wanna do is you wanna prep the surface area for the lifters. Okay, so you take some oil, be generous with this, because I mean, at this point, all this is living in oil always, right? So just lube up every single surface around here. Prepare it for the lifters, the hydraulic lifters that are in this car. When you're taking these out, if you haven't already, label them, clean them up, clean up the surfaces, label them, put them in, or put them in order because you want them to go back in the same position as they were, um, same location and everything. But if you don't, it's not the end of the world in this case because these are hydraulic lifters. So in essence, they're all the same size, they all have the same part number. In essence, it shouldn't be the end of the world. They work off of oil pressure. So it wouldn't be the end of the world if you do misplace them, but you do want to, in ge generally, you want to keep them in the same area that they came out of originally, so. But I label mine, so we're good. We're putting them in, uh, lube up the surfaces as well, and that's it for the lifters, really. See this little notch? That notch has to go into its position, just like that. Kind of give it a couple pushes, and if it's working, then you do the rest and you're good. Before we continue with putting on the camshafts, you want to make sure that your motor is at top dead center, right? So as you can see, it's really difficult to see, but this this little guy right here, it has a label, it says OT on it. That means it's top dead center, and you put a pin through it, and you lock it in place, and you're good. Then you can move on and put the cams. So before we put the cams on, you wanna lubricate every surface that the cam is gonna be sitting on, right? Make sure the entire surface is cleaned off first, without any sort of dust or anything, then lube it up with some Lucas oil or some, some assembly lube. And then it's crucial that before you remove these, if you're reusing them, in my case, I'm reusing them, I did label them, and it is important that they go back into the exact same position as they were because this is an intake cam and this is an exhaust cam. Okay, they're different. The lobes on them are different. They point different directions. They're supposed to be where they are. Okay, you cannot mess this up. So after you lube it up, then you can apply these guys. When you put these cams on, in this case, this is this is bank two, I think, right? So th these are pistons six through 10. Make sure that the lettering, as you can see the little engraving, that is facing upward and that lobe right next to it is facing more down that way, right? That way, you, it's gonna be much easier to uh, put these in time. So then the exhaust cam, same sort of deal, right? When you put it on, make sure that the, the label right here, the little engravings are facing upward. And then notice how these lobes are facing up and those guys are facing down. That's because of the timing sequence and that's just how the firing order is gonna be. So don't freak out, make, but just make sure that that is the case. On the other hand, you can see since this is piston one through five, right? Top dead center means piston one is all the way maxed out. And that these lobes, the, the intake and the exhaust lobes, are completely on opposite ends. They are, see that they're, they're facing up, the, the digits are facing up, but when the gears up here, the vanos are gonna be turning, these guys are gonna be going that way and these dudes are gonna be going this way. So the firing sequence is supposed to be very important here. Okay, so just don't, don't confuse that and make sure that it's properly set up. Now if you put them on this way, it wouldn't hurt to kind of give it a little bit more lube just on everything. Wouldn't be a bad idea. So when you're putting the cam caps back on, be very mindful, because in German, intake means E, it starts with the letter E for some reason, and exhaust starts with the letter A. So, when you're putting these caps on, they all, they're all labeled, so you can't confuse these, right? E is the top, A is at the bottom, there's arrows pointing that way, so you can't confuse it. See, this one says E6 on it, the, all the following ones are gonna be in sequence, so E6, E6, E7, E8, E9, E10, and then the arrows should be pointing all to the front of the motor. Put all the, these bolts back in, make sure they're clean. Typically you wanna start off with the cam lobes, you know, the side of the cam of the lobes that are actually pointing down towards the valve. So you kind of give it a couple squeezes and you wanna go, you wanna make sure that the entire cam is lowered simultaneously kind of as best as possible. So you kind of give a little twist here and there, but just make sure that the cam doesn't get warped or anything, just, you know, make it go down evenly all across the board. So this is a long process, but you don't want to screw this up because if your cam snaps, it's not fun. So then once they're all leveled down and you got them 
to go down evenly as best as you can. Next thing you want to do is torque them down. So leave the leave this cap completely for last, right? All these are bolted down and almost to spec. So right now we're gonna torque them down to 13 newton meters because that is the torque spec for these. And once you get them all down to torque, then you can bolt down these four and that's gonna be it for the cams, almost. In this case, start from the middle ones, just so it's seated nice and easy. Then move on to the side ones. And these are the same torque spec as the other cam bolts, so 13 newton meters. You put the camshafts on, that's still not it. Now you have to make sure that your cams are exactly perfectly centered at top dead center. So there's a little kit for these V10s. I got it second hand, found it online somewhere, but you can get them, they're about 120 bucks I think for this entire kit, it's for, it's for timing. So to make sure that they're perfectly even and centered, you take the A6 through 10 tool, you put it onto this little section right here where the engravings are. It's supposed to see, it's supposed to sit flush with the head and this surface right here. Notice how it's not. So you rotate your cam until it seats itself completely straight with the entire surface of the head. You have to play around with this and twist the cam every single time until this tool sits perfectly flush with the entire head surface because this, this step is very crucial for timing. If it's off just a little bit, it's gonna kind of mess up your timing, your firing, and it's not gonna be fun. So make sure it's seated properly. All the way down, they come with these little screws that you can start screwing them in. Once the exhaust one is seated nice and flush, you want to do the same exact thing for the intake one. And until they both sit on top of each other really nice and easy, that's when you know that this is in good position and that it's ready to be assembled with the Vanos. See, now this one's kind of sticking out a little bit, so kind of want to twist this side just a little bit. There. Gotta play around with this until it all sits nice and flush with itself and that's when your cams are done. And that's it, that's how you put the heads on and replace the head gaskets on this V10 and that's how you put the camshafts and the line for proper timing. Stay tuned because next video we're gonna be doing Vanos adjustments, we're gonna actually make the timing perfect. So uh, stay tuned for that, peace.